Hi. So, I left a post in the Facebook group yesterday about a tool that I was working on for bridging the gap between Scratch and Unity. Um, and I thought there was quite a bit of feedback, so I thought I'd show a, a, a demo of it working. It's very much a work in progress, but it's at a point where I appreciate any and all feedback, uh, criticisms, or positive, it's all good. So as you can see in front of me, we've got the Unity tool open here. We've got a completely empty scene, we've got no assets loaded, it is an empty project. I'm going to go over to my browser, which is on the Scratch website. I'm going to search for a project, I'm going to search for Sui Snarks. It's a fun little game. And here it is. And if I can look inside the project, when it eventually loads, we can see it's got a level sprite, a player sprite, a snark sprite, and so on. All the sprites, as you would expect in a Scratch project. I go to full screen and, and run the project intro screen. I'm not going to have a massive game of this. I'll just show what it looks like. So I go into it. Let's go. I've got a man who can run around. He can dig holes and hopefully catch snarks and knock them through. Um, that's effectively it. So I go back, I'll just pause and I'll go back to the actual editor. So as a it's a standard project, but up at the top we've got the URL. And now every Scratch project has a unique project number which is used in the unique URL. So I'm going to copy that URL and I'm going to go over to Unity. And the only difference here is it has got a package loaded in the background which contains my my, my abstract abstraction layer code. And the only thing you can see about it here is a button at the top called Scratch, which isn't usually there in Unity, so I'll hit that, and I can import a project. And it's asking me for what project, so I'll just paste in the URL, and it's taken the number out of it, and I can press enter. And what it's doing now is it's interfacing directly with the Scratch website, and it's pulling all the scripts from the website, it's pulling all the assets, all the costumes, all the sound effects. So Whoever is using this doesn't have to go into Scratch and download a project. It, it takes all the complexity out of it and just pulls it straight from the website and converts it into a Unity project. So it's, there's a lot of assets in this game. Uh, PNG files, vector graphics, wave files, it's got lots, but it's got them now. And you can see it's created a costumes folder, a scripts folder, and a sounds folder. And it's also populated the scene. So if you remember, we had a player sprite we had a music sprite, a level sprite, so for every sprite it's added a game object to the Unity project scene. And down here in the assets, if I look in the costumes assets, you'll see all the costumes from the Scratch project have been pulled across into a format that Scratch can use. Uh, similarly, all the sound effects have been pulled across and all the scripts. So if, for example, I look inside the player script, It's got everything converted to C sharp. So when the green flag is pressed, this function will 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 run, and it's setting a variable called clone to false, and then it's hiding the sprite. So what it does in Scratch, I'm trying to keep as many parallels with the actual names of Scratch blocks, such as hide is hide. Uh, obviously, an if block is an if block. Uh, create clone of myself corresponds with create clone of myself in Scratch. Uh, these are the broadcast received events. So when I receive the player initialize message, it will run this code. So in in this scratch, it will be there'll be um, a receiver when I receive player initializes. There's a complete parallels which should make the code nice and easy to understand and and look through. And if I go back to the actual Unity project and I press play, then after it's done its initialization should drop into the full Scratch project, but you're playing it now. It's, it's, it's not emulating, it's actually playing from C-sharp code inside Unity. Let's go. It's, it's effectively, it's, it's just the same game. So it's actually converted it all across. And there are, it's, it's a nice way to introduce yourself to Unity. Um, somebody may have a favourite Scratch project they've worked on, they can pull it over here, they can play it, they can see how it's adding game objects to the scene. They can see it's, it's adding clones. 
in in Scratch you can create clones and obviously that works here. So there's Snarks clones, two Snarks clones and there's two Snarks so they're obviously the clones and what you can do if I go to this scene and double click on a Snarks clone it zooms right in on that clone. So you can see it there, you can see how it's built up. It's got a, a sprite renderer which draws it to the screen. It's got an audio source for playing any audio from that snark. It's got a custom collider. Now you can see a green line around this clone. If I could turn the custom collider off and on, see that is actually the collision box that Unity has made. And down here it's got the sprite, the, the script attached to the game object. So it gives a good breakdown of, of you can look inside and see what's going on in Unity. You're not starting from a blank canvas. If I go back to the C Sharp code, let's have a look inside the player sprite. And I'm interested for when the player is marking, is, is walking, or, or when you're controlling him to walk. So here we go. If not left or right pressed, so if key pressed left. So if you're pressing the left key, this is going to activate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint in there and I'm going to attach to Unity. So I'm attaching Visual Studio to Unity. And I've got a breakpoint after if left is pressed. So let's go back to Unity, continue the game. Now I can go right, but as soon as I go left, it's, it's dropped straight to the breakpoint. So it's a great way to introduce debugging as well. We can, we can single step the code, we can walk into the code, we can set watches, we can look at variables. Um, so let's expand that, we'll see what stage variable is. And, and as, as will be the case in Scratch, your stage is where all your global variables are defined and you can see them all listed there on the stage. So you can look inside. Um, so it's an introduction to debugging as well. I'll remove that breakpoint. I'll hit continue and I'm going to stop that one running and I'm just going to fire up a different game. Let's, let's have a look at Asteroids. This is quite a, quite a simple game. Um, this is one I've actually got a tutorial for but that's by the by. I'm going to copy the URL for it, go back into the Unity project and I'm not going to remove any of this, it'll do it automatically. I'll scratch import project, put the URL in there, hit enter, and again, straight from the Scratch website, pulling all the information across. Um, and it's reloading the assemblies and doing all this magic, and here we have it. It's got the costumes, the scripts, it's, it's populated the scene. If I run this, hopefully I'll have a game of asteroids. There we go. So again, they can, they can, as with any project, they can look at the script. You can see on the left-hand side, as I'm blowing up asteroids and more appearing, it's adding clones to the scene. You can see them getting added, you can see them disappearing every time I fire a bullet, a bullet clone's being added. So I've seen this as being, um, hopefully, a great way to introduce people into Unity. If they've previously done Scratch, fantastic. They will have a favourite project, they'll know inside out. They can just pull it across, they can see the C Sharp code. I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to add visual scripting as well, which will give the option of either going straight to the C Sharp code or to the visual scripting layer where it won't, be, it won't look like Scratch, but it will be a visual layer where you can drag blocks around or add blocks and connect blocks. And, and with that, I'm hoping I'll be able to actually let, let children expand their projects by adding Unity specific blocks to maybe add 3D or physics or you know to to and to use the power of Unity uh, and to just grasp to get used to it. So this is where I'm at the moment. There's a lot of work left to do, but at this point I would very much appreciate any feedback. I see this from a programmer's perspective. I do teach code clubs, but I'm a programmer through and through. So any feedback from educators will be very very welcome. Uh, as I say, if it's critical feedback, great. If it's positive, great. If it's suggestions, if it's any feedback at all, I'll look forward to hearing it. And thanks, thanks very much for watching.